Hello everyone, thank you for stopping by. This is Sandy from Color Creatively. And today I'm going to work in Mythographic Menagerie by Fabriana Antanasio. And I thought I would work on the first page here. Um, I was trying out my colors. Let me move my computer back a little bit here. I uh, was trying out my colors to see which ones I wanted for the sky. And I just finished the sky. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and work on this picture anyway. Uh, I will be using, I've, I've swatched them here, my colors. Uh, Distress Crayons by Ranger and some Gelatos. Where did they go? Some Gelatos. I don't have a lot of colors in each one, so I have to use them together. And they're very similar, so they work fine together. Now, if you don't have these, you may have King Art. That's gel sticks, any kind of gel sticks. There's other brands of gel sticks out there. Or you can use your um, soft pastels, and you can use them wet or dry. So, let's get going. I am going to, I did this wet, and what I'm going to do is a base coat, and then I will come back over with pencil and detail. So I uh, used, let me show you what I use in case you have distressed crayons and you would like to follow along. Blueprint Sketch is the color here, and the lightest color, Speckled Egg. Now they have really unique names, so it's a very pale blue and a medium blue. Let's get going. I want to uh, see how much we can get done on our base coat, and then we will... Um, do our detailing. So what I'm going to do is just start out with some of the items here and I have never used this color, Festive Berries. It's sort of an orangey, pinkish, reddish, I don't know, it's its own color. I'm going to be using my clear palette here, acrylic, and scribbling these colors on like this and I will either use them dry or wet. I'm not sure exactly this time how I'm going to do it. Probably wet right now. And then I will pick them up with um, these little brushes here. I have this set. There's three sizes. I also have makeup brushes, foundation brushes here that I use also. But I'm going to use these. They're um, foundation, or not foundation, but brushes. And I'll list all these below. And then these brushes here um, are angled. These are just square, and these are angled. And they're, they let you get into the small areas. So if I use it dry, I can use these. If I use it wet, I'm going to use my water brush. I think I'll do the bigger part of the elephant dry, and I will do the smaller items wet. So I'll list my brushes below, because I know a lot of you have been looking for small brushes that help you get into spots. Also, these work great for distress inks. You can use them for your gel crayons dry, but you can use them for distressed ink also. Okay, let's get going. I think I'm going to do this wet. And let me um, get here. I have my Pentel water brushes. And um, I just put some of this, uh, what's called Festive Berries by Distress Crayon. Use a color you like for the flower. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do it wet today. I think the last video I did more of a dry technique. I will do a dry technique on the elephant because this is not watercolor paper. And uh, for such a big area, it's better to keep it dry. And for a small area, it's okay to use it wet. We have to play with our paper and keep it from getting too much... Uh, Moisture. It's not the product, it's the water. Okay, let's get going. 
Like I said, these are all base coats for you new people. I do have a lot of new subscribers, and I want to welcome you. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Uh, in the uh, below, below in this video, I'll be glad to try to answer them the best of my ability. I'm just rubbing some more crayon on my palette and, and picking it up with my water brush. I'm not squeezing the water brush. Do not squeeze it. Uh, use it. Let it flow the normal way. I like Pentel water brushes. You pay a little bit more for them, but they are well worth it. And they come in three sizes. I use two sizes mostly. And um, you only want to squeeze it when you want to change color. Or you want to uh, get more moisture, then go and run your brush over a baby wipe, but do not squeeze it. That's enough moisture. Right now, I have enough moisture that just came out of the brush itself to do that without... Um, peeling my paper. Okay, let's uh, get going. I thought I would do that, that color. Um, my mushrooms, I need to tie that in. Now, my philosophy is I least like to use a color twice so that it connects your picture. Can't always do that, but I try to. And um, Let's see where I could put this uh, color again. I think I'll put it in this gemstone. We're going to go over this gemstone with pencil. And we're going to make it a little more dazzling. <laughs> okay. If that's the proper word. And uh, I use uh, have a paper towel I've crumbled up here. I need to straighten it out. If you um, are doing wet with the brush, you want to wipe your brush if it's too much water on your paper towel. And on a baby wipe, you want to just use the moisture from the baby wipe to get water. That's all you need to do. And we can pretty much uh, watercolor on anything. Okay, I'm going to make that a little darker. I'll go another coat. It was dry. It's an um, it looks more pink now than when I tested it on my swatch card, but uh, it's okay. We're going to go with it. I think that mushroom down there is, should be um, a reddish color, so I'm going to do that. Oh, let me zoom in here. I'm not zooming in for you guys. I was looking at these mushrooms, and that's about the only one. There might be another one right up here that I could make red. The rest we're going to do a different color. Okay. I don't know if it's red, pink, or orange, this color, but it's pretty. Okay. Now, I'm going to wipe off my brush. Um, we'll squeeze it a little. And um, let's see. Let me zoom you in. I'm, I've got to think what I need to do here today. Okay, we're, maybe we're zoomed in a little too close. Okay, that looks better. Okay, um, this elephant looks like he's carved out of stone. And here on his ears, it looks like there's holes and parts falling down. So I took this background sky and went in here uh, around all these little plants. I didn't want to leave it white. Um, I will be detailing this with stars, some silver acrylic paint, with a gel pen, and a lot of other things. So stay tuned. We'll, we'll be getting there. We need base coats first. This saves us a whole lot of time and effort. We don't have to color every inch of our picture that way. And it's a lot. And it comes out looking nice. Um, it comes out fine. 
Okay, uh, let's see what I want to do next. I think I want to try this building here. It looks like um, an Arabic type building. And I thought for that I would use gelato because I have the pistachio color there. I'm just mixing these up. Don't be afraid to mix your pencils or mix your gel crayons with, a, you know, one brand with another. Don't be afraid to do that. I know a lot of people think they can only use one brand of pencil or one brand of um, gel crayon together, and you can, and you can, you can mix them up. I do that all the time. Okay, I'm for those that are new, just putting a little bit on my palette here. And I'm going to pick it up. The water from the brush is sufficient. And um, I'm going to mix this some gold and some green. Um, I think I'm going to do my elephant in a little bit. I want to do some of the details for some of the, or the other images, I should say. And uh, But, you know, if you don't care for my colors, you can choose your own. You can always look at a color wheel and um, choose colors that are next to each other or across the color wheel from each other. When they're across the color wheel from each other, you do not want to mix them together. They'll turn to mud. But if your colors are next to each other on the color wheel, they won't. They will be beautiful. Okay. Well, it's been really cold here, and hence I'm wearing my gloves for my arthritic hands. They, I have a lot of pain when the weather's so cold here. I'm in a desert, and it's been snowing, and it's been very, very cold for a desert climate. And... Uh, even in my house, when I have it warm, it's still the dampness I feel just creeps into my bones sometime. So, and also I notice these gloves help me from not smearing my pencil. <laughs> so, that's great. Now this was pistachio, and this one I believe is a metallic. Let's see if it is. No, it's not. Is it? No, it's not. Um, they have a shine, the metallic do, and they're really pretty. Okay. Um, I want to um, look at my colors. I just swatched the col few colors that I have. So I can look at this and choose out something um, to go with the gold here on the building. And I'm going to do some uh, tea dye, they call it. Um, gathered twigs would be pretty, too. Forest moss. Where's the tea dye? Did I get it out? Thought I did. Oh, well, hold on, folks. Let me put you on pause and get my color that I wanted. Back. I decided to use gathered twigs instead. It's just handy. I have it here, and it's a pretty color. Uh, I'm going to scribble that on my palette and pick it up with my water brush. That's it. And um, I want to go around some of these with a brownish color. And then I want the, the gold to look shiny and brown. It'll be brownish too, but it'll be a different look. <clears throat> I forgot that grain on there. I want to get that one green. Now, if you have gelatos or distressed crayon 
or king art. Uh, let me tell you the difference. Um, when these distress are dried out, uh, up, it's dried, I can go over this with watercolor and it won't reactivate the color on the bottom. But I cannot do that with the other uh, gelatos or king art because they're more watercolor and they'll all mix together. That's about the only difference. Otherwise, it depends on what kind of art you're doing uh, that you would need that feature. Sometimes I do mixed media backgrounds and I do want to go over one medium with another. So um, that's why I've got this small set of uh, distressed crayons. I don't know how my colors are going to look like, or what they're going to look, how they're going to look, folks, because I normally spend time on a color palette, but today I just needed to get in here quickly to my room and start filming, and my husband's going to be gone for a limited time. So I didn't take that much time to do a color palette. So I'm hoping this is going to come out looking good. We'll see. We'll see as we go. This is an experiment, and you're experimenting with me. Okay. Um, I can always change things, too, if I need to. Let me use a little more of that pistachio from Gelato. Now, I did get a small set of Gelatos, too, because I'm... Uh, off camera, I've been doing Bible journaling and um, uh, mixed media art in my Bible and coloring in my Bible. I have some coloring Bibles. So if any of you are interested in that, let me know. I'll do a video. Otherwise, it's just something I'm doing personally. But Gelato's works really fine on Bible paper, which is so thin. And... Uh, People have been using them for years that way. So that's just an FYI. Now that looks sort of brownish, but in person it looks green. <laughs> it's green. It's pistachio. Okay, let's see now. Um, I thought that I would use, let's, maybe I need a gold. Maybe I don't use that gold. Maybe I'll use this sort of a yellowish fossilized amber and then detail it with a brown pencil. That might look better than this down here, the gold. Yeah, it will. Okay. I'm going to use the fossilized amber. Let's see um, which one it is. Why can't I find things here? T There's tea dye. Didn't know that the um, crushed olive. Okay, hold on. Let me find my color. Sorry to put you on pause again. I found the color. Sorry, it took a little bit here. Fossilized amber is what I want to do in there. It's a gold brown. And uh, let me put some on the palette here. And stick it in there with my water brush. Okay, no. I had to find it. I had put it away for some reason. Okay, now I lost my water brush, folks. What am I doing with my water brush? Just a second, and I'll find it. Did I drop it? Okay. Well, we'll use this one. Okay, sorry about that. I'm going to pick up my gold color here, and I'm just going to color that in. I'm going to detail this with some browns, so it's going to look more like gold, more gold. And right now it's going to look more yellowish. Okay, that bugs me that I can't find the brush I was using. I don't know. Today I think I'm a little scatterbrained. 
I think I'm organized and I was trying to do everything in such a hurry that I can't find things. Lucky I have more than one router brush that I get out at a time. Now this picture, I'm not sure how it's going to come out. It might come out in, in a muted look. I'm not sure. I'm just choosing colors that I think look nice together, and I'm hoping on my picture it will. And I wanted, this is a blue here, believe it or not. It looks gray on the camera, but it's blue. It's a light blue called speckled egg. This is a, it's a light blue, so I don't know. It's funny how things look different on a camera versus in real life. I just needed a lighter color here to go with this brown. And, uh, oh, I forgot some of the color there in the background. We'll have to fill that in on this spire here, too. And on these decorations here on the... Okay, so that's sort of an Arab-looking building, a mosque-type thing. Maybe it's in India because they have elephants in India too. So we'll leave it like that and we'll come back to it. Okay, I just going to get, like I said, we're doing base coats. Okay, now his, the reason I'm to put a little brown there is because his trunk, instead of being ivory, the gray sort of stops here and this whole thing is wood and becomes a branch. Um, this whole thing becomes a branch. His, his tusk is wood, like a tree branch. This, um, t this is not a tusk, it's his snout. It's, it's uh, gonna be gray. So, I do have some browns in here, and I need to repeat the color in other places. So, let's get going here and see what we're going to do now for our base coats. I think before I do too much on the elephant uh, around it, I should do the elephant. <laughs> okay, now I've got a couple colors here. Hickory smoke and pumice stone and a white. So I think I'm going with the lighter color because this is the base coat and I want to have pencil to darken it. So let me, uh, let me get out a baby wipe. Thought I had one out. You can use any brand of baby wipe that you have available. And this one, if you're in the United States, is from Walmart. It's their brand. Well, I can't get it. It's a brand new pack, and I can't get it out. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that, and I ripped it, but that's okay. I'm going to fold it up. I ripped it trying to get it out of the pack. It was so tight in there. And it's wet, and that's all the wetness that I need for my palette and for my water brush. So I'm wiping my palette off and then I'm going to just keep this for my water brush. Okay, I'll get organized. We'll get there. I decided to use the pumice stone, which is the lighter gray. I don't have any other grays. Um, it might be too dark, so what I'm going to do is put a lot down, and then I am going to mix it with the white here. I'm going to put a lot of white over here on the edge and mix it. Don't be afraid to mix your colors, your um, gel crayons. Mix them, mix them, that's very good. And then I mix it like this on my palette. Then I'm going to test it on a test sheet. So that's how you do it. Okay, that'll be fine. 
Now it's not going to be uniform. Every time I mix it may come out a little different, but the variation in the base coat is going to give it more character and make it look nice. So that's what we want. Now on this paper, it's a little thinner than the paper used to be, I feel. Maybe I'm wrong. So what I have to do is uh, I'll do this coat, and then if I need it darker, I'll do some more. But I'm not going to keep wipe, keep going over it with my brush. It seems to be a little thinner. Maybe I'm wrong in these uh, mythographic books. If you have mythographic and you find that it's a paper's different, let me know. Maybe it's just to me. And, uh, okay, so let me get going, and, and I've got to get some more made up here. I'm doing about one-third white to two-thirds of the gray. And it's better lighter than dark. Okay, and I'll just go over it one time. If I want it darker, I'll let this dry, or I will dry it with my heat tool, and then I will go over it again. That way you don't put a hole in your paper. And remember, this is a watercolor look. So watercolor is not totally uniform like an alcohol marker. And a water-based marker is going to look like watercolor. So it's not going to come out streak-free. So just know that. But what we're doing here with the base coat is what's going to give us uh, some character to our picture. Now this gray pumice stone seems to be more like a little bit of a French gray to me. So what I'm going to do is use a cool gray when I detail it so that that brownish gray stays in the background and my elephant looks more... Um, i got to have a little more water. I need my baby wipe to get my brush wet. And, um, yep, that worked real good. So we'll use the cool gray to make sure that the brownish gray shows through. But my elephant's going to look more of a true gray. Okay, I need more on my palette. I do little by little because it dries out and it's harder to pick up. And I don't want to waste it. I want to use everything that I put on my palette. Okay, I'm picking some more up off my palette here. And then I'll mix some more. Okay, let me mix it up. I just think you oh you could use watercolor if you don't have gel crayons. If you're watching this, use your watercolor. So but I will list all my supplies below in case you're interested in them. 
And I would appreciate it if you use my link. I'm an Amazon affiliate, and I get a very tiny commission if you shop through one of my links, buying anything. It doesn't have to be art-related, and uh, that helps my channel grow. I'm not going over the leaves. I'm trying to keep it. And I'm not going to go down in here because this is a tree trunk. It's obviously a tree trunk for his tusk. Okay. Let me mix up a little more. I have to clean my palette. I went all over. <laughs> okay, there we go. This color would be good too for bricks and castles and that type of thing. And stones. And it would work out real good. This base coat's taking me longer than I thought. Okay, let's go in here a little. You know what? I won't finish the whole elephant. What I'm, what I'm going to do is do all the elements. I'm already 30 minutes into this video. I was going to make it shorter. Um, and then I'll finish it, finish all the um, base coats offline. So now you know how I'm doing the elephant. So we're going to do him that way. I am going to take... Um, Let's see what the color is here. I'm going to take Brush Corduroy, which is a golden brown color. And I'm going to do a base coat on this tree branch tusk of his. So all the tree branches will have a base coat of a goldish type and we've got mushrooms now, too, coming out of here of, of the tree. So we're going to do that on that color. So choose a golden brown from your collection if you don't have these. Okay, so that's a golden brown. And I'm going to do all of these tree branches that color, this brush corduroy. I'm going to do them all. And then we're going to use a different brown to detail. Let's see what else uh, we need to do here. Um, that's part of the building. I didn't realize it goes down that far. We'll see how that goes. Um, I'm not sure on the mushrooms yet, so I'm going to leave them. The only other thing we need to do are the leaves. And I thought I would use... Um, this color here called Rustic Wilderness. It's sort of a brightish green or, oh, that pistachio again here. Hmm. Let me see on my piece of paper here. Do I want to make these really green or do I want to make them, well, I don't want to bury the pistachio and you won't be able to find it. So I'm going to go with this color of a green and there's another green. This is sort of a, um, a darkish green, and this is peeled paint. It's a lighter green, yeah. So what I will do, this one looks more like the 
Hmm. Okay, let's see. Well, that's pretty dark on my leaf. The other one's too bright. Okay, I'll um, have to get a little brighter color. Let's try crushed olive. And I can detail with the dark color. Of course, my brush is sort of... Yeah, that's a lighter color. Okay. Um, and I'll just put some in there to accent this, but right now it's wet, so that's fine. I'm going to use this crushed olive. It is a light olive gold color. So I'll do that on the branches and um, the leaves, I mean. And as far as the mushrooms, I'm just going to leave those. So I think we've color covered all the elements on the base coat right now. Let me do a little bit more on that lighter color to make sure that that's what I want. Otherwise, I could use the pistachio. Uh, let's see here. I might have had some residue on my brush before of the brown. Yeah, it'll be different than the pistachio, but yet it'll be light enough for me to detail. So this will be more muted colors in this picture than I normally do. I usually try to do very bright, but sometimes we're going to do muted colors too. And... Uh, Oh, that's a mushroom. I don't want to do that mushroom, that color. And that's part of the sky that I missed. Okay. Uh, let's do a couple more leaves, and then I'm going to let you go, and I'm going to finish this off camera. Just the base coats, and then we'll be back to do detailing. There's a little difference in, in the gelato versus this, so okay, that'll look good. It has to be in my, um, what do they call it now? Crushed olive. There's not that many leaves. There's a lot of mushrooms, but maybe when I get to going, I'll find more leaves. And then I can always take this other color. I can detail with a pencil. Maybe that's better than using this. This is sort of bright. But I uh, could detail with that. Yeah, we could do that. Just on the um, veins and the leaves. Yeah, we could do that. I might detail with this while I'm doing this. will be a base coat but I'll have the leaves sort of done. I might use a pencil on top of them again, but they look good like that. Okay, I think I'll use the pencil. Maybe that leaf group will be dark, but the others won't. And up here. So, um, yeah, it's just not coming across on the camera like I would like it to. But it is in person. Okay, uh, I will be back after I finish all the base coats on this picture, and then we'll go on to detailing. So, until we meet again, hold on, I'll be back. Okay, I finished the base coats, so let's move on to the detailing. And I normally detail with a pencil, but I thought this time... I would detail with the same medium that I've been using here, which is the Distress Crayons and the Gelatos. So, on the elephant, I had used this pumice stone color, and then I had mixed it with white. But to detail, now I've done a little bit here, and I think it'll look okay. I am going to just use it straight, so it'll be a little darker. Okay, let's get started. I, For those that are new, again, I am going to scribble on my palette here. 
and then I am going to pick it up with a water brush. Uh, let's see, do I want that water brush or the other one? I'll try this one. Okay. And uh, I'll just pick it up. I'm not squeezing the water out, any water out. I'm only using the water that's in there. Okay. Um, and I am going to just go over the lines that the artist has put in here for shading. Let me come in closer so that you can see that. <clears throat> and that'll be about what I do. On these leaves now, I did go over them with a darker color. I had a light base color, and then I just squeezed in some dark color. But I still want to go over the middle vein with another darker color. So we'll be doing that too. Okay, uh, on the elephant, we're just going to go that way, this way. Now, I started to color with pencil in his uh, jewelry on his head here, but I'll get back to that at the end of this video, um, how I want to do it, because I think I'm going to use um, uh, Sparkle Pop gel pens to bring out the... Uh, uh, shininess and uh, I might lose some detail in that jewelry but I would rather it be shiny and stick out okay these are just the lines the artist has put in and that's what we're going to do on all of this so let's do different parts of it Now, if you think it's too dark in places, you can go with your water brush once that dries and go back over it. Or you can, um, a way you can, uh, if it's too light, you can go back over it. If it's too dark, you can use just some plain water. But please don't peel your paper and make sure everything is dry. Everything is sparingly used on color book pages. Now, I do feel like this paper, and I said it earlier, is thinner than the original, but I could be wrong. I haven't really gotten that out to um, <clears throat> check. But if you have worked in this book or any of the recent mythographics, let me know if you found that to be true or not, too. So the elephant is just going to be done like this. We are going to just go over these lines. I might do a little on the edge like I did there. But basically, I'm just going to go on the lines that the artist has put in. And the more water you use and the bigger the brush, the more, mm, what I call it, natural little look. I'm using a medium-sized brush here from Pentel. But I don't know. You have to experiment with your brushes. Okay, so this is the gray pumice stone from Distress Crayons and uh, Ranger by Tim Holtz. <clears throat> So, I'm going to do a little more, and then we'll move on to another element, so our video doesn't get too long here. There's a lot of elements here. And, uh, anyway, this whole elephant could be detailed that easy if you didn't want to get out your pencils and blender and all that. It's another way of doing things. It looks different than when you uh, will detail with pencil, I have to say. My favorite method is pencil. But um, there are pictures, especially in Teresa Goodridge books, that I have strictly used this method to... Um, detail. Okay, so that's how the elephant is going to look. 
Now let's move on while we can here to another element. I'm going to go back to the gelato here. I use this pistachio color and I'm sorry that it doesn't look green, <laughs> but um, it is a beautiful green and it's pistachio from um, gelato, Faber Castell gelato. So I'm going to put a little bit down on my um, <clears throat> palette here and I'm going to clean my brush off real good. And I'm going to pick it up and what I've done here on the building, as you can see compared to these, I went around the edges and made it darker with the same color. And um, let me get my finer brush because it uses less water and it um, will have the paint, the gel crayon will come out darker. That was a little too light. There you go. So we're just going to detail. There's some lines here, again, that the artist put in. And I'm going to leave, leave those darker. Sometimes you might need to use a smaller water brush. You'll have at least three different sizes in your arsenal. A small a medium and a large and as far as I know Pentel is the only one that has this fine of a point on the small one but you might want to check yours that's why I f prefer to buy Pentel's and uh, make that darker there we go just didn't have enough crayon on my palette here And that sure looks different than this. So <clears throat> I will do each element and then you can finish yours off camera. Put me on pause, my video on pause, finish yours, and then come back to the next section. Okay, and there's one down here at the base. So I want to get that dark around the leaves there. There we go. And then I did shade in here, if you notice, the steps. I just made them dark on this side and left them light on that side. Okay, now on this here I was going to use a brown pencil, but I decided to use my Gathered Twigs Distress Crayon color and to go and this has a fine point so it allows me to do this this brush I need to pick up a little more color and make that darker and then I'm going to leave the um, gold showing on every other band here that we put on underneath and this could be darker now. I see that it dried. This is a little tedious here, but it's worth it. Mm -hmm. I like that darker better. It will lighten as it dries. Okay, now the other side has dried, so I'm going to go over it again with another coat. So remember, if once your paper dries, then you can do another coat if you need to. Yeah, this looks like some type of temple, I think, in India, because elephants are known for being in India. Yeah, okay, let me put just a little bit more on there. And this 
this needs to be a little darker. Okay, I'm using such small amount of water that I can go over it. Okay, on this spire here, I'm going to put the brown in it. And here too, we'll come back over and make this shiny some way, I think. I'm going to use that brown in the archway here. Go down. I think I'm going to leave my archways, except this one. I'll make a little darker on the edge here. And the inner, inner edge. Um... Yeah, we're about, it's, it goes quick, this kind of detailing. It goes real quick, if you like the way it's going to look. There's a rock here, so why don't I go ahead and do that? I'm making it sort of this brownish color because it's connected to the temple, and I don't want it to look like it's coming off the nose or the trunk of the elephant. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to go like that. Just squiggly lines. Doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, watercolor looks better when it's not. Okay, anything here? Uh, I might just take a little brown there instead of green and go up. That's about it. The rest I'm going to leave. And uh, that's it. We detailed that whole thing that quickly. Let's move on, and let's detail the trunk here. I thought I would use, let's see, I used um, brush corduroy here, but I think to have it stand out, the detailing, I'm going to go ahead and use the same thing, gathered twig. It's a little darker brown. And I'm going to go again on these lines. I want it to sort of match his um, the the uh, detailing on the skin part. I think having a brush with this small of a tip really really helps when you're doing uh, detailing with the um, watercolor mediums. Okay, I'm, these trees have a lot of different uh, design in it, that, uh, there only, that little tiny one could be brought out, there's a little spot there, you'd be surprised how many shading lines the artist puts in the drawings when until you start detailing, and then you see it. Then we'll let that dry. It'll get lighter, and then we'll see if we need to darken anything. So that's how I'm going to do this wood here. And there's wood here. There's a little bit there on this a branch of the tree comes around. Yeah, and down in here, and so you can finish it over here, too, on the other side. And that's how we'll do the wood. Now, let's go back to the leaves, because I did something a little different after I got that. Um, I used two colors, uh, a light olive green and then a little um, darker, and then I'm going to use... This bright color that I said it wasn't, Rustic Wilderness, it's a dark green, bright, bright, dark green. And now I thought that I would just go over the veins in the leaves, just making them a tiny bit darker. And that just seemed to add to this picture for me. Not much, just a tiny bit. 
and I like the way it looks. And then you can see all three colors. So that's how I'm going to do the leaves. Now, I was just doing the major leaves, not all these small ones. I'm going to leave them with two colors. But the larger leaves here, this is larger leaves, has two colors. They all have two colors, but this one's going to have an extra darkness so that it stands out here too. This is a large leaf. But all these small leaves I'm going to leave. And you can, um, you know, decide which ones you want to add that extra darkness to and which ones you don't. Okay, so that's our leaves. Let's move on to our flower. And um, I used... Sorry for reaching. This color, Festive Berries. I don't know what to say it is. It's an orangey red, but there's some pink in it. So um, whatever color you like, I'm going to scribble it on my palette again. And, oops, I have to wipe that off. I got something on there, and it'll smear all over my desk. Okay, so I... I'm going to go with this small brush so there's less water and my detailing will stand out. I just use a brown and a gold for the center point. Okay, I might bring that down a little there and smoosh it out, but that's about it. This is a quick way to detail, quicker. Okay, I need some more. This is a beautiful color. I don't know what what to what class to put it in. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, but it's really pretty. Okay, that is getting lighter there. So I might want to make it a little bit darker. I'm going to, and that's lighting it. I think I'll let them lighten up. Don't want them all dark. And then I'm going to do these mushrooms here a little with this um, darker color. That I had put in there. And there's one more. I just wanted to connect this flower to something in the picture and not just have it standing alone. So these mushrooms and the stems here, I just did the same as the leaves color, a green color. I didn't do anything exciting there. Okay, and then on the jewel here, I'm going to add a little darkness. We'll put something shiny over that, and it'll look really great around the edge. Okay, let's see what else we have. The mushrooms. Yes, let's do the mushrooms. Now, I took a gold color and did the mushrooms gold, so they would stand out a little differently from the temple here and the leaves. And the bottom of them where mushrooms dark, I did green, but we're going to touch it up a little with some brown now. <clears throat> okay, let me get this back out here, my color, and um, I'm going to go just, oh, I have a, particle on there. 
I'm just going to go, where did I start here? Just um, on the lines again. Now the base is green, but this uh, shadow is going to be brown. And here too, it's gold, but the shadow will be brown. That's it. Doesn't take too much. And down in here where there's a little neck of the, there's like a, I don't know, a part that comes down separate from the stem. I'm going to make it a little bit brown. Okay, here we go. This is where I started. And then I'm going to just put a tiny bit in here. That's it. This one, I'm going to darken this. We'll leave some of the green showing here too. And... Again, there's marks around here because this mushroom in front is casting a shadow on the other one. And then we'll add a little brown there. And I'm going to go a little bit on the top there of the mushroom. I want a lot of the gold to show. Okay, I did these already, but I'll just go over it a little bit. On the lines. And I thought there's different kinds of mushrooms here, but I made them all the same. Because I want to keep a limited palette on this. I didn't want to have too many colors being introduced here. Okay, I think that's it as far as the detailing. So let me get off camera. Let me back out. Okay, I think we're looking good. It's starting to look good. It has to dry yet. But <clears throat> I'm going to get off camera. I'm going to finish the detailing. Uh, the elephant, the wood, I think I've done all the leaves I'm going to. This building is finished. The mushrooms are finished. And the flower are finished. So, um, the, oh, around the sky, I'm going to take, I did do it here already, the blue, which is blueprint sketch. And let me show you. I just went around the edge of it. Oops, let me get my brush cleaned off of that red because um, and put a little on my palette. And then I'm just going to go around the edge of this dark part of the sky and make it more crispy like I did here on this side. And that'll be all the shade, the yeah, shading or detailing that I'm going to do. Except I will be back because we've got circles and stars here. And I want to highlight those. There's some circles here on the elephant, in the doorway, and his eye. So let me go back and finish the detailing. And then when I come back, I've got to get my supplies out. I'll come back and we will do this sparkling. Well, you know what? Hmm. Let me put you on hold and let me get my supplies and do it right now. Then when I come back, you'll have the final picture done. How about that? Okay, hang on. I'll be right back. Okay, um, I went ahead and took my Sargent Art Glitter gel pen that's black and just went around the jewelry on the head here of the elephant and around here a little bit. Um, I'm going to darken that a little here. I don't like that white spot. And it's a glitter gel pen, so you won't be able to see the glitter. But it's black. And then what I'm going to do for this jewelry and the headpiece is I'm going to put on this uh, extreme glitter, 
acrylic finish paint. It has very fine glitter, and that's what I like. And it's in hologram. It's the only color that will go over every color pencil, and or, or in this case, gel crayon. I'm only going to do the, the um, center point of the jewel and his jewelry, and that'll be it. Okay, and for the eye here, I thought I would just use my um, Jelly Roll Sakura Glaze, black glaze pen for his eye, and make that darker, and it's wet, so i got to be real careful with this, what I'm doing here. I'm going to leave some of that white showing those of the... That's the white. Uh, I might go over this. I'll finish that off camera too. And I will take my trusty Micron pen in a number three and do his eyelashes and make them darker and a little bit longer. Enhance them a little bit. And um, let's see. I will be using my Silver Sparkle Pop gel pen for the stars here. There are stars that the artist drew. It's got to dry. And now I'm going to go over that, the edge of that, and put the black back in with the Micron pen when I'm done. It has to dry. There's some circles here. I, instead of making them white, I'm going to make them all silver, and um, then I will outline them again with the black micron pen so that they do stand out more. Let's see, what else? On the doorway, I'm not going to do it because I want to do the glaze first. I want to put the silver on these stars. and. I'm going to take my acrylic extreme glitter paint by Folk Art and do the spire here and maybe the green part on my building. I'm not sure. I like glitter, but sometimes too much is overdoing it and less is more. So I will see how, oh, I got some color down there, some crayon. I'm going to have to take care of that. Okay, so that's about it. And, you, and you've and you seen what I'm going to do there. I'm going to do a the, this circle here will be silver too, and it'll all show up really nicely. <clears throat> so let me go off camera, finish um, what I'm doing on the detailing, and I'll come back with this picture finished. And then you can see it. So, hold on. I'll be back. Well, here we are back. I've done all the detailing. I do have the black glaze in the doorway, in the eye, on the jewelry, and some silver sparkle pop, and some micron pen that I've outlined them with so they glitter. And that's how our elephant picture came out. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below, and I'll answer them for you the best I can. And until we meet again, happy coloring.